They go up to a KFC and the Colonel Sanders is dressed in a Santa outfit, puts mm. the Santa outfit on the dinosaur. Perfect disguise. Yeah. <laughs> And they're like, wait a minute, we have time to do a dance now? <laughs> yeah, this is after, like, they've been put on the news and they know that. And then they have time for all this. Merry Christmas, Phelan! Merry Christmas, Allison. You ready to talk about the greatest Christmas movie no one's ever heard of? So, uh, I don't know if people remember, in 1993, there was a little movie called Jurassic Park. I think I've heard of that. Well, uh, in Japan, they knew that they were making Jurassic Park in North America. It's by Steven Spielberg, so obviously it was like a big deal. There was a uh, Godzilla movie that was also really popular. Yeah, Godzilla versus Mothra was the other one they wanted to cash in on. Yeah, so they're like, how do we cash in on this? They decide to, I think, simultaneously make a manga and then adapt the manga into this story. I'm not really clear if there was another book involved or if it was just this. They adapted this into a Christmas movie, really rushed it out because it came out the same summer as Jurassic Park. And this was called Rex, A Dinosaur Story. She's still or uh, in Japanese, I'm gonna read it and I'm sure I'm, I'm not gonna pronounce it very well. <laughs> Rex, Kyoryu Monogatari. This was uh, starring Yumi Adachi, who is also pretty big now. Like, she's still doing pretty well. People in North America probably know her from uh, Star Kid. I do not. Well, I'll show a screen cap and everyone will be like, oh, right, that girl <laughs> from Star Kid. Oh, now I remember. <laughs> This was directed by Haruki Katakawa, apparently who's pretty big in Japan at the time. Uh, he was arrested for cocaine smuggling <laughs> the same year this came out. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this took away some of the box office from um, Jurassic Park in Japan and then was pulled <laughs> from theaters because the whole cocaine thing. Yeah, you know, like actually the last act of the movie where there's all that snow and the diamond dust falling down, that, that's all cocaine. We know what that he was. He was smuggling yeah. it directly <laughs> through the movie. <laughs> The weird thing about this movie is that, like, it's a Christmas movie, but it isn't. Mm -hmm. uh, well, first of all, it was released in July. But secondly, it's just, <laughs> this is so many movies in one. Oh, so yeah. ostensibly, the outline of this film is uh, there's a little girl and a dinosaur. She's raising the dinosaur. They don't like that they're putting the dinosaur in all the commercials. Uh, so she takes off with the dinosaur. Uh, at the very last minute of the film, suddenly it is a Christmas movie <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and somehow becomes even more insane. But every minute of it, I enjoyed very much. <laughs> yeah, this movie is like all over the place. <laughs> Cause like yeah, it, it does it starts as a different movie than what it turns into at the end, and then just like you're hit with nonsense after nonsense at the end, like w <laughs> when the little girl and the dinosaur are doing their escape, but sometimes they're not really trying to hide that well, or I should say all the time they're not trying to hide that well because at no point does she really try to disguise this dinosaur in any convincing way. She just kind of no. walks around and people are like, <laughs> wait, is that the dinosaur? And she's like, oh yeah, this is a dinosaur, but not not the famous one everyone's looking for. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's like this dinosaur is super famous at this point. There's billboards, there's merchandise, there's commercials, uh, there's toys everywhere. And I guess people are wearing masks and at some point you're, you're, they're supposed to think that it's in the mask but there's also a point where like there's a news reporter saying like a dinosaur believed to be rex is seen running around like yeah. oh yeah are you sure that's the guy or is it another guy yeah <laughs> <laughs> There's so many of them. Who knows which dinosaur that is? <laughs> like, wait a sec. Can I see your face next to this? Are you the famous dinosaur? No, no you couldn't be. Just another common T-Rex wandering around. Ah! Rex! 
Mostly this movie centers around a little girl named Chi? Chie? Chi. She has some pets on her farm. She's got like a horse and a dog named Tauntaun. Tauntaun. <laughs> and I thought he smelled bad on the outside. <laughs> yeah, that's where they hide the dinosaur egg. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it's the horse that farts at them. Yeah. Yeah, I guess the horse must have farted at them. I don't know what the, the horse ass shot was about otherwise. Very weird. <laughs> this little girl, apparently this was something in the manga or the novel, but not really touched on in the movie. Uh, she seems to be autistic. She's kind of shut off in some way. And uh, part of it is because her mother has abandoned her. There's this deadbeat mom plot in this mm -hmm. because her mom wanted to go off and do science and abandoned her family. Yeah, well, her father, he still did science, but he decided to still raise his girl. But her mother went off to New York to do it. It was important to U.S. science, I guess. Yeah, well, because, like, otherwise her being born wouldn't have meant anything. <laughs> Another meaningless life raising you. <laughs> I love the first scene, though, where the little girl's, like, meeting her mother, I guess, since the first time since she was a baby or something, and she's standing there with flowers, like, oh, I get to meet mommy, and she's just like, mm-hmm. So where's the dinosaur? Yeah, show me the egg, please. She's yeah. like, eh. maybe a little head towzel. Uh. Yeah. Her mother's stone cold. <laughs> Terrible. Her dad is a paleontologist, so he's like, all right, so we found this dinosaur egg. Uh, in this mountain, and uh, it might be like a real live dinosaur, not just like a fossilized dinosaur. So we're gonna go find it. And she's like, hey, dad, can I come with you? And he's like, cool, yeah, you can come with me. <laughs> Why not? This isn't that important. Him and these guys go to this mountain. I think he has a business partner, and there's like a news guy who's doing a documentary about this. Some Shinoda guy. Yeah, they meet up with a guy named Shinoda who is some sort of local, I think he might be a priest at this Mu temple. There's like a, an ancient Mu temple there that they're going to, to find this egg. I guess he's explored this area some before, but he says like, oh, I haven't gone this far before. <laughs> Once they're getting deeper into this magic dinosaur cave. <laughs> yeah, he's magic. He's mad. He, ju he just floats away from them and everyone's sitting there like, hmm, this is a thing that happens. <laughs> Eventually the little girl falls down a tunnel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this fun little ice slide that goes forever. <laughs> yeah, they all go down the ice slide and then they find uh, <laughs> the egg in a pyramid, some sort of plastic pyramid. Yeah, floating prism thing. And like, I love they get in there. They see this floating prism thing with an egg and then someone's like, look! Like, they don't <laughs> notice that? <laughs> oh, well, I was too mesmerized by the rock face on the cave wall there. Oh, oh, that now I see. Thanks for pointing that out. Shinoda was running a pyramid scheme. <laughs> 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 it's it's unclear all of this is nonsense it's unclear like what is yeah. lost in translation what is a cultural thing and what is just movie nonsense well, i mean i think a lot of it's movie nonsense because if you're ever <laughs> waiting for this to really be explained it doesn't happen no no they're just like all right here's the egg and it was worshipped here or something i don't know and then the little girl they find it because she yeah. has some sort of psychic connection with it. The dinosaur is calling to her from inside the egg. And uh, they're like, some of you have evil intentions in your heart. Ah! Like, <laughs> some of these guys not uh, pure of heart like the yeah. little girl. Who could it be? Could it be evil mustache man? So they take it back and there's a long portion of the movie that's just like science trying to get the egg to hatch. And that's why they call in uh, Chi's mother. And she's like, all right, I'm gonna help you hatch this egg. And they're like, grr, grumble, grumble. Mm -hmm. You were a bad mom. And the dad comes in with like, I, yeah, I have a theory. There's a theory that like dinosaurs went extinct because they were bad moms. Yeah. <laughs> This guy has many theories, like many insane theories about why dinosaurs went extinct. What was the other one? Uh, what was the other one? It wasn't because they didn't poop, was it? Yeah, 
It's like he would come up with a theory based on anything, though. It's like he sees her giving the dinosaur Coca-Cola. He's like, I have a theory that the dinosaurs died out because they didn't get Coca-Cola, actually. So what she's doing is right. <laughs> he published this. He published his petty little theory about dinosaurs being bad moms because he was mad at his wife. For <laughs> The Coca-Cola product placement is great. They thought this was gonna be like a huge thing. So like they were just really pushing this movie and they had a, a Coca-Cola tie-in. They got everything, even cartons of Coca-Cola. They also <laughs> have like one of those crappy stores. I guess those were even in Japan, you know, the ones that either have Coke or Pepsi on them. Those dinky corner stores. Yeah, like come on in, I-N-N. -N. Yeah. <laughs> Chai. Two goes by one of those. She doesn't actually go in though because she even knows like those stores are always crap. So she's like, I'm not going in there. I'm just going to leave my dog and the horse there. <laughs> Tauntaun's like, what? Come on. <laughs> you abandoned me? <laughs> Tauntaun, you take the horse back. What? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so there's science going on, right? So the mom's there and she's like, uh, Jurassic Park did the frog thing, so we're gonna do that with sea turtles. <laughs> yeah. If we put a sea turtle, the thing in the sea turtle egg, then we can hatch the dinosaur somehow. And so they have this super cool science computer that's like, egg, nucleus, boop, 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 boop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, the science has commenced. <laughs> a lot of their computer graphics are like, really silly looking like there's one meter where it's like heartbeat and it's just like a little counter that's going down <laughs> like yeah. oh that's the heartbeat meter just this little thing that goes down <laughs> they make a lot of sense this is like a 300 million dollar dinosaur or something but you think no, 300 million yen yen yes sir but it's also <laughs> just run off a lab that's attached to a farm and <laughs> they let the dinosaur get out all the time <laughs> his farm paleontology lab <laughs> So uh, they're like, we can't get this dinosaur to hatch. They've they've successfully put the nucleus in the turtle egg. They can't get it to hatch. The little girl comes in and who's psychically linked to the egg and she plays her little ocarina for him. Mm -hmm, yes. <laughs> And the ocarina brings the dinosaur to life. He's like, quit doing that. I'm trying to sleep. Yeah. After all the science <laughs> fails, you, you need the combination of magic and science to birth this dinosaur, I guess. And yeah. that's what the, the weird prism pyramid thing was waiting for to call upon people once it was time. Like, we know now they can actually birth this T-Rex baby. Yeah, we were waiting around. They didn't have the capabilities of having a little girl play an ocarina <laughs> and at a sea turtle nucleus or whatever. <laughs> So this dinosaur comes out and it's like the legs are sticking out of the shell as it's <laughs> walking around. And this leads into the portion of the movie that is just the animatronic dinosaur doing adorable things with a little girl. Mm, and also peeing. And also peeing, yeah. which is somehow adorable. <laughs> it's like they took it further. Like they had that load of Triceratops shit in Jurassic oh, yeah, Park, yeah. but they didn't show it actually shitting. Like this movie had the balls to show the T-Rex pissing. <laughs> Yeah, the dinosaur's constipated at one point. Uh, I love this portion of the movie. It's literally just, it, it's just cute thing after cute thing after cute thing. And it just suckered me in every time. I do love like her training the dinosaur to do all these things. Like, are you really going to teach a T-Rex to like piss in a potty? And then like it puts <laughs> the potty on its head and runs away. <laughs> I like the part where she's trying to get him to eat. The dinosaur won't eat at first. And then um, they're trying to get him to eat green peppers. Mm -hmm. And apparently this is a cultural thing. Like green peppers are kind of like the yucky food that like kids don't like in mm. Japan. She doesn't like green peppers either. And her mom doesn't like green peppers. But her mom shows her that she can eat green peppers. So if she can eat green peppers in front of the dinosaur, the dinosaur will eat the green peppers. It's a whole multi-generational green pepper eating thing. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a Mac and me moment where she gives the dinosaur Coca-Cola, of course. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then like the dinosaur knocks it over. Like it doesn't use the straw and she's like, what are you doing? <laughs> What kind of animal? <laughs> Rexu? <laughs> Why don't you know how to use a straw? <laughs> There's this odd anti-commercialism vibe 
in this movie for something that is heavily tied into Coca-Cola and a lot of commercialism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're like, don't use this dinosaur for these commercials. That's the thing. They have created a dinosaur in modern day. And the only way they can think to make money off of this thing is commercialize this dinosaur. Not... Yeah. We we made a dinosaur. They have a ton of merchandise too. Like it's littering every toy store and every street yeah. they go down. There's Rex masks. That was Mustache Guy's idea, not the dad. The dad's oh. the good guy. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> They're like the uh, the lawyer in Jurassic Park. We can have a coupon day. <laughs> <laughs> The T-Rex gets out and goes onto the farm to hang out with Tauntaun and the horse. Yeah. <laughs> and it's also adorable because, like, you know that dog doesn't know this is an animatronic. It's just, He's just interacting with mm. this dinosaur, licking peanut butter off its hands. Yeah. Yeah, it's cute. I do like, though, after when she yeah. just sees the dinosaur and Tauntaun walking through the field in front of her house and just... On me. Like, <laughs> she's a very stern little girl. <laughs> she's, she's got a lot of stuff on her mind. Um, that leads me to believe that they might have been going with the autistic thing. Like that might have been something they just didn't say in the movie. Um, I would believe it because that's something that autistic people sometimes do. So maybe could be or she's just really stern she might have just had some thoughts on her mind she's like rex uh, uh, rexu you're doing yeah. it again <laughs> they have this uh model of a t-rex hanging out in their farm paleontology this is giant where is this this is just behind the farm is it yeah apparently there's a little museum on here too i don't know <laughs> So, uh, yeah, the, the dinosaur thinks that this is his mom. He's all sad about it. So it kind of parallel with Chi yeah. and her missing mom. And she's upset. She's like, I'm your mother, not that stupid fake T-Rex. Yeah, there's the part where the mustache guy starts hitting the dinosaur for doing a bad job in the commercial. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, you said it too loud. You're ruining things. <laughs> Stupid guy, he's so mean to this dinosaur. Yeah, I love like after that too, uh, the mother's like, oh yeah, I think Rex acted up because of all the negativity or like bad feelings around the lab. It's like, or maybe the guy hitting it, you know? <laughs> yeah, I think we can detect what happened in that situation. <laughs> why, why Rex accidentally nibbled on Cheese's finger there. <laughs> after that incident, they're like, you're pushing the dinosaur too hard. I don't think we should do any more commercials or anything. Mustache guy's like, what? But this is 300 million yen. Ah, yeah. I quit. But I still own half the dinosaur. <laughs> I still own half the dinosaur. So he chops him in half so he gets half the dinosaur. Yeah. Very sad. <laughs> <laughs> A month later, we've gone to the Christmas portion of the movie. <laughs> he comes back and he's like, give me that dinosaur. I want that dinosaur. Yeah. And they're like, but we're in the Christmas portion of the film. We can't give you the dinosaur. <laughs> so I've got the Blues Brothers with me. Yeah, he's got these like Blues Brothers backup guys. For some reason, he now can take this dinosaur away. And she's like, yeah. my mom sucks. Let's go find your mom, Rex. <laughs> <laughs> You're like mustache man before he goes to he goes over to cheese like yeah, man It really sucks how much your mother doesn't really love you <laughs> <laughs> This whole movie they're like you suck mom and she's like, yeah, I guess I kind of suck <laughs> Even her mom's like yeah, you suck, but your husband stole too <laughs> Yeah, I think Rex reminded me of too, like a lot of points in this movie is the Yoshi animatronic from the Mario movie. Yeah. <laughs> it also reminded me of the Mario movie because right at the end, there's like some weird dinosaur world inside the cave. I'm like, oh, is that like where the meteor hit and created a parallel world? Super Mario. <laughs> and hey. What if they found a way back? The little girl is like, yeah, your mom's probably in that cave or something based on nothing, I guess. Yeah. So they run away together in a little carriage that she set up by herself with the horse and the dog. I don't know why the dog had to come. She completely abandons her other children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the little girl's like, my mom sucks and then abandons Tauntaun. Tauntaun's sitting in the back at the end of the movie like, can I get some attention please? And they're like, nah, mm -hmm. <laughs> we still don't care about you when the dinosaur's yeah. gone. 
nothing about you. Get out of here. <laughs> Get out of here. It's like that Simpsons where the cuter sheep keeps going in front of the other one. Ah, ah, ah. Get out of here, you. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who made the, the outfits for the dinosaur? Yeah, like you said, like maybe it's for a commercial because the other explanation is she knitted this while they were on the run. I don't know. There's a lot of things that this little girl has access to that we have no idea where they come from. They get in the back of a truck and then take off into the city and it's Christmas Eve, so everyone's celebrating. And then they're in like the back of another like cart or something or carriage. I don't know where that came from. No one seems to recognize that there's a real dinosaur there with her. I guess because he's in disguise. Yeah, no one could notice that. And like, it's even on the news by this point. Like, hey, you know that uh, dinosaur that should be sort of famous? Yeah, it's missing. So is this little girl. <laughs> <laughs> They're most wanted. <laughs> Dead or alive. <laughs> This is where you're wondering, too, if she stole money from her father because she has money to yeah. go to all these things and fancy restaurants. Yeah, they go to this fancy ass restaurant on Christmas Eve packed with people. Mustache guy and his goons are there chasing after them because they know the little girls run away. I guess they've stopped for Christmas dinner, too. Everyone decides to stop and do Christmas festivities yeah. and then get back to the chase. I, I guess it's a pet friendly restaurant because a lady stops by with her dog. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fish Eye Lens cartoon lady show. Yeah. <laughs> it's another moment where it's like no one notices this dinosaur until it roars. No. <laughs> this this part of the movie is tremendous. It's when it goes completely insane because the rest of the movie is kind of a cute Jurassic Park girl meets pet movie. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it's like dinosaur Christmas chase movie. <laughs> They go up to a KFC and the Colonel Sanders is dressed in a Santa outfit, puts mm. the Santa outfit on the dinosaur. Perfect disguise. Yeah. <laughs> And they're like, wait a minute, we have time to do a dance now? <laughs> yeah, this is after, like, they've been put on the news and they know that. And then they have time for all this. Well, a guy in a suit is suddenly the dinosaur. And then the, the Blues Brothers guys are like, we're going to go to a church for a while and listen to some, some music from the choir. <laughs> the short guy in the Blues Brothers gang is, like, eating chips with a guy in a Rex mask. It's like, what yeah. is going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at this point, there is no explanation for why anything happens in this movie that happens. Nothing makes any sort of sense. Nothing correlates with anything else. It just keeps going from set piece to set piece. So the little girl is uh, dancing with the dinosaur to some very cool saxophone music. <laughs> They're in the dimension where no one else is at this point. Yeah, it was like so chaotic. And then it's just like, clear the <laughs> square. They're going to dance for a bit. <laughs> Suddenly, the urgency of the situation is completely gone. <laughs> they chase after them, and the choir kids come out, and this random kid who made fun of her in one scene. They show up and start throwing snowballs at the Blues Brothers to save them. They walk very slowly away. <laughs> to the Coca-Cola party bus <laughs> where they go in disguise again and these little kids are like, I don't know, I don't know, this must be some girl and a kid in a mask. <laughs> some ugly kid over here. <laughs> yeah, well, they ask about it and she's like, oh yeah, that's my brother. And like, oh, okay. Yeah, but then two <laughs> seconds later, they're like, wait a minute, that's a dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, is that the dinosaur or is it a different one? <laughs> yeah, apparently this goes all night into the daytime where the Blues Brothers guys are waiting for the bus. The little boy is also there on a snowmobile with a little sleigh behind him, and they get in the sleigh, and then there's a snowmobile chase. <laughs> this scene is so good. It's so good. You got the dinosaur in the hat and a little girl, they're trying to shoot him with train darts to <laughs> chase scene. I don't understand how this boy tracked where the bus was going to be and got ahead of it. He was doing this all night? Yeah, it was insane. <laughs> It turns into like in Her Majesty's Secret Service and they like throw them into the snow machine and blood everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the little boy also is waiting by 
a hot air balloon? Like a bunch of balloons? <laughs> yeah, he had this apparently ready as well. So it's like, after they left, this little boy's like, all right, I'm going to set up this whole escape plan for them. What is going on? They get on there. They're like, thanks, kid. He's got a present for them. He's got a soccer ball waiting. He hits them with a soccer ball. They also had a net at one point when they were on the snowmobile. They threw a net on them. They got out of the net. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the mustache guy's trying to hang on to the balloon. Starts turning into like Mario cart and they're throwing red Koopa shit. <laughs> Rex eats one, grows wings, they fly away. <laughs> Might as well start it happening at this point. This is the end of Mustache Guy. This is his last scene. He's hit with a soccer ball, falls down. He's like, bring it back! Yeah. Foiled! Foiled! Soccer! I hate soccer! <laughs> <laughs> They're in an igloo. <laughs> There's an igloo <laughs> for some reason. Like this is apparently something she had ready and like they also made a cake. Yeah, they're sitting there eating cake and she's like, this is the day where you eat cake with your parents. <laughs> so let's have some cake together. This dinosaur is shivering like it's cold <laughs> as fuck. Cold blooded animals usually do, right? They shiver. They shiver in the cold. <laughs> That's what they do. <laughs> and then magically deus ex shinoda and the parents show up <laughs> they have an iris transition in the sky it's so weird because like yeah they start having like this diamond dust falling yeah. around <laughs> them but it's not in their shots it's just when they're looking off at the forest and then a bunch of lights turn on in the trees <laughs> her bracelet breaks off because that was a thing. She's like, when your dream comes true, your bracelet breaks. Yeah, she'd given one to the dinosaur and there's actually a really funny moment where the dinosaur you know, was first meeting the dog, Tauntaun, and he's like, he hates him first till he sees the bracelet. <laughs> the dog knows. Like, oh, oh, he's cool. He's, cool. <laughs> he's got a bracelet. <laughs> So yeah, she's reunited with her mom. Her dreams come true. They go off to the mountains with Shinoda. They go by the Easter Island statues and there's there's uh, yeah. the mom in there in the dino dimension. <laughs> yeah, supposedly What's I happening? guess there's other living dinosaurs there in this world. But it's like you never see one. You just have to assume there's other dinosaurs in there. And also, why did the dinosaur have to wait an egg, be born, and then come back here? Like, what? Why? It's not like they stole the egg and then like, oh, they need to bring it back. This apparently was how it was intended to happen. Yeah, because they seemingly were summoned to do this. <laughs> But it's like, yeah, if there's a whole dinosaur society just a little bit beyond that nonsense, like, why? Why did this happen? She has to do, like, the Harry and the Hendersons thing, like, Psh, we don't want you anymore, Rex, Psh, get out of here! Well, actually, it goes a lot easier, because she's like, go, Rex, and he starts going, and then she's like, Rex, no! And he doesn't turn back, he's like, no, you told me to leave, I'm not turning back, I'm done. <laughs> You told me to go, I'm going. It's like she wanted it to be like Harry and the Hendersons, but Rex is just like, nah, I'm good. All right, bye. Yeah. This whole, he just has this look of confusion on his face, like, why did this happen? Why did anything happen? I don't feel this was necessary at all. And like, I had to have Sea Turtle put into me or something. Oh, what? They fade to the credits and then they come back and there's an extra scene yeah. where the mom extra comes back, even though the bracelet fell off. Oh, the dinosaur's bracelet also falls off because the mom. Yeah, but first they're just like, oh yeah, it sucks that your mom abandoned you again. Mom shows up and I guess the lesson of the movie is um, don't be a working mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very you weird. Stay, you're a bad mom. Though she was kind of, she didn't really care about her kid that much. She was kind of a bad mom. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the fact, I guess she hadn't seen her since she was a baby. Not, not that great. <laughs> It's like, you know, you can work, but maybe you should try to be in your kid's life a little. <laughs> Wait till we have Skype, then, I, then I'll call her up sometimes. Yeah, it'll be a lot easier. <laughs> and then the dinosaur appears as clouds in the sky. <laughs> That's the good ending. Yeah, I guess happy like, end. If you watch the movie <laughs> a bad way, you get bad end. Phelan, I love this movie. <laughs> I love this movie, genuinely. Like, there are parts of it where it is genuinely good, too. Like, it is silly, but there are parts of it where it's like they have really great animatronics. 
like there's a good uh, soundtrack to it. You're pointing out one part where you see like the dinosaur breathing and stuff. Like they put a lot of work into this despite it being rushed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Considering like how rushed this production was and that the director was smuggling cocaine the whole time. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I think they came up with a pretty good movie. I thought the lead actress was really good. Um, mm-hmm. I think they had like a compelling story. And even though there were some translation things, I feel like I still felt the emotion the movie was going for. And this is all a fan translation too, by the way. This was all, um, the English subtitles were all fan done. And thank you very much. I'm very grateful to those people because i uh, got to watch this movie. Yeah, it's always annoying when they don't officially translate something, so it's nice when people do that type of stuff. And I think this is something that people should seek out, even if they have to, like, find a fan translation. I would, I really hope that there's, like, an actually, like, official uh, English dub of it or sub. Yeah, like, it's insane, but, you know, it is, it's a fun watch. And, like, the animatronic dinosaur is cute through a lot of it. (laughs) Yeah, I think it's very compelling. And the ending is insane. Yes. <laughs> the story made no sense, but it was still good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I guess we should end this with a Merry Christmas. No. Mer- 